Hey guys, I'm Shimmer, and welcome to the latest installment of Noobing and Nern, a beginner's guide to Elder Scrolls Online. Today I'm going to be covering the uh, basic and then more advanced combat mechanics in Elder Scrolls Online to help you melt the faces of your foes. There will be time links in, this, in the About section below, so if you want to skip over some parts, you can. But now let's get to it. Starting out with the most basic, your light attack. This is when you hit your enemy in the face with your equipped weapon. One single left click will light attack and will do some minor damage. Light attacking is super important because it will do two things for you. The first thing it will do is apply your weapon enchantment effect and this will be the enchantment on your weapon. One of the ways those are triggered is by light attacking. Make sure if you are dual wielding you have two different enchants on your weapons with your most important enchant in your main hand. The next reason light attacking is so important is because it helps you generate ultimate. When you light attack, your character gains a buff with, which grants you 3 ultimate per second for 8 seconds. Next moving on to heavy attacks, unlike light attacks when you just click your left mouse step button, you will press down and hold to initiate a heavy attack. And these are important because they will regenerate resources. Physical weapons will regenerate stamina, and magical weapons will regenerate magicka. They do moderate damage, and the amount of damage they do scales off of your maximum stamina or maximum magicka. The amount of resources a heavy attack uh, restores scales on the length of time the heavy attack takes to charge. So if you're heavy attacking with a two-handed weapon, it will restore more stamina than dual wielding as it takes longer to charge. The amount restored also scales to player level. Now there are different ways you can increase the uh, amount of resources restored and the actual damage a heavy attack does by using different skills, champion points, uh, armor sets, and passive abilities. Like light attacks, heavy attacks will also help you gain ultimate. Next we'll talk about blocking, and blocking is super important because in some situations it may help you avoid certain death. Blocking is done by pressing and holding down both your left and right mouse buttons. A successful block will reduce the amount of damage from an incoming attack to your character. Blocking does cost stamina, and the stamina cost scales to your level. The cost of blocking will change per level as it is a base cost per level. There are many ways you can reduce the cost of blocking and the amount you can block by using different enchants, champion points, and skills. In PvE, there are some visual cues that will tell you when you need to block. When you see an NPC start to get these white sparkly lines, block. Uh, you cannot perma-block as when you are actively blocking, you stop regenerating stamina and will run out very quickly if you don't stop blocking. Like heavy and light attacks, a successful block will give you a buff that generates ultimate. While blocking, you can perform a bash, and a bash is when your character is blocking. While holding bound down both the left and right mouse buttons, you release the left mouse button and press it again. This will perform a bash, and the bashes interrupt the target. It is important to know how to do this as some NPCs have attacks that must be interrupted in order to survive. Bashing will also cost stamina and will deal a small amount of damage. Next, dodge rolling. You can perform a dodge roll by double tapping a directional key. You will want to perform a dodge roll to avoid damage or get out of a secondary effect like snares, stuns, and crowd control abilities. In PvE and PvP, it is easy to know when to dodge roll by the red circles or telegraphs on the ground. Dodge rolling like blocking costs stamina and is a set cost per level and scales on your player level. If you do additional dodge rolls in succession, the amount of stamina it costs will increase, so be wary of dodge rolling all over the place. You can tell when it is safe to dodge roll again without the additional cost by looking at your character's feet. When you dodge roll, your character will, will have little green clouds or sparkles at their feet. When this goes away, you can dodge roll again without the additional cost. Now let's talk about ultimate abilities. And these are going to be the most powerful skills in your arsenal. Don't be that guy that sits there with a fully charged ultimate and never uses it. Dawn. Make sure you are light attacking, heavy attacking, or blocking to keep your ultimate ticking up so you can keep using that ultimate as much as possible. 
Ultimates can do many things like high damage attacks, add increased damage to your party, or even give you defensive buffs. There's even Mega Heals. So take a look at the ones that are available to you and make sure you're choosing well. Next on to Execute Abilities, and these are abilities that will deal more damage to an enemy when it's at or below a certain percentage of health. You use these when the enemy is almost dead. For example, a Nightblade's Assassin's Blade or Killer's Blade deals 300% more damage to targets at or below 25% health. Don't use these abilities until the enemy is in execute, ra execute range, as you will likely have more powerful skills that you can cast until then. Damage over time, or DOTs, are abilities that are placed on an enemy that do a certain amount of damage over a period of time. You should always have at least one DOT that you can put on an enemy so that it's ticking to do some additional damage while you go through your rotation. Crowd Control Abilities, or CCs, are abilities that will slow or completely incapacitate you or your enemy. There are two different kinds of CCs, Soft CCs and Hard CCs. Things like knockdowns, knockbacks, and abilities that completely incapacitate characters and prevent them from casting or, or moving are hard CCs. You can break free from a hard CC by pressing the left and the right mouse button at the same time. This will cost some stamina. When you do break free, you will get a buff for a short period of time that grants you immunity from hard CCs. This will be indicated by the swirly dust at your feet. Uh, soft CCs are roots and snares and abilities that slow you. Uh, you're still able to cast spells while rooted or snared, and you can dodge roll out of these. However, no immunity is granted if you dodge roll out of soft CCs. Soft CCs can also be spammed. ESO combat is super reliant on your buffs and maintaining and having the appropriate buffs on your character at all times. There are many skills, abilities, and potions that will grant you major and minor buffs. Uh, major buffs of the same type do not stack, however, major and minor of the same type will. For example, you cannot stack two major sorcery buffs from different sources. You can, however, have a major and minor sorcery buff on at the same time. Major buffs of different types can be stacked, for instance, major mending and major sorcery. Knowing which buffs are best for your class and making sure you have them is very important. For instance, on my Templar, I'm always casting Entropy when it is down to make sure I'm getting major sorcery. And for the minor sorcery, I have a Templar buff. Having both the major and the minor buff active adds 25% spell damage. There are also major and minor debuffs, in which you can decrease enemies' physical resistances, spell resistances, uh, decrease healing taken. These are also important and are applied from different attacks, weapons, and passives. Another example, as a stamina damage dealer, you want to maintain major brutality and major savagery on yourself while in combat while always maintaining major fracture on the target. There is also the Magicka equivalent with major prophecy, major sorcery, and major breach, respectively. I will link below a list of major and minor buffs and their sources so you can know how to get them. You may have heard the terms weaving and animation canceling floating around and been wondering what it is. The term weaving refers to inserting or weaving a light attack in between every attack that you cast. For instance, light attack, skill, light attack, skill, light attack, skill. Weaving in light attacks will help your DPS tremendously by adding in white damage, applying your weapon enchant effect, and constantly keeping your ultimate ticking up. If you do these fast enough and click really fast, you will simultaneously animation cancel. Animation canceling is basically performing an action fast enough after performing an ability to cut the animation short, thus allowing you to get more damage out faster without having to wait for the entire animation to complete. Animation canceling can be performed with light attacks, dodge rolling, blocking, bashing, and weapon swapping. Looking at an example, you can light attack, skill, dodge roll, skill, light attack, skill, bash, weapon swap, skill, light attack. This can be very uh, difficult to get the hang of and perhaps the easiest and in my opinion the most important is the light attack animation cancel. Just getting in the habit of weaving in this light attack will help you tremendously. You will eventually get the hang of it and shoot them off fast enough to cancel out the animation uh, that's happening. 
If done properly, animation canceling can allow you to do more damage and get off more abilities in a shorter amount of time. So now looking back at all we have covered, you will be prepared to tie it all together when facing an opponent. And that's it guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget to drop a like and sub if it helped you out or if you enjoyed it. And don't forget you can catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash shimmer with three M's. I do giveaways like crown packs and game codes and just have general fun. I'll see you guys in Tamriel.